Rural and District Administration Introduction India is a vast and diversified country. No single authority at the center can manage and control it alone. Therefore, in order to manage the administration properly and efficiently, our country has been divided into 29 states and 7 union territories. They are further divided into small units known as districts, subdivisions, tehsils and parganas. Among them, the district is the most important unit of administration in our country. India covers an area of 32 lakhs 87,262 square kilometers with a large population of more than 100 crore. It is not possible to administer such a big country from one place. So, it has been divided into 29 states and 7 union territories. The states of the Indian Union have been further divided into districts which are smaller units. This has been done for providing better administration and better services to the people. There is no fixed size or population for a district. The districts have evolved depending upon the needs and requirements of a particular area. In 2001, there were 593 districts in our country. The districts have been further divided into still smaller units such as tehsils and parganas for the same reasons as stated above. But still a district is very important unit, so we should know about the district administration. Structure of a district administration A district is a very important unit of administration. The official who administers is called district collector or district magistrate, DM or deputy commissioner, DC. He is a member of the Indian Administrative Service, IAS, and is generally an experienced and efficient officer. The district collector is in charge of the district. Hundreds of officials work under him. A district is also the unit of administration for various other departments such as police, cooperative societies, agriculture, education, etc. Some other important officials of the district are Deputy Collector, Tehsildar, Planning Officer, Superintendent of Police, Chief Medical Officer, District and Sessions Judge, Additional Judges, Inspector of Schools or District Educational Officer, Agricultural Officer, etc. Main Functions of the District Administration the district magistrate is the highest executive officer of the district. He has a number of roles to play in the district. The main functions performed under him are Maintains law and order in the district Maintains land records and collects land revenue Supervises and monitors development works in the district and provides civic amenities Provides relief and rehabilitation works during natural calamities like flood drought, earthquake, etc., supervises and monitors the activities of the Panchayati Raj system in the district, provides judicial administration. Maintenance of law and order. Maintenance of law and order in the district is a very important duty and function of the deputy magistrate or deputy commissioner, DM or DC. He is helped in this field by the superintendent of police, SP or SSP, who is a member of IPS, Indian Police Service, and is the highest police officer in the district. If there is a threat to peace in the city, the DM or DC imposes Section 144, which prohibits people from assembling at a place. He can also impose curfew and ban carrying of arms as well as movements out of home. Land Records and Collection of Revenue Maintenance of land records and collection of revenue is an important function of the district administration. The DM is helped in this work by officers like Tehsildars, Naib Telsidars, Kanungos and Patwaris. They help in the measurement of land, classification and assessment of the products and levying of revenue. Civic Amenities and Development The district administration provides for civic amenities like 
health care, education, maintenance of government buildings and roads, etc. It also has the power to review the overall development of the district. It provides hospitals and dispensaries. It builds and maintains the roads, highways and bridges. The district educational officer looks after the provision of primary, middle and secondary education in the district. The district medical officer supervises the running of hospitals and dispensaries. The executive engineer of the PWD is in charge of construction and maintenance of government buildings, roads, bridges, etc. They all work in coordination with DM or DC. Supervision of Panchayati Raj The district collector also has to keep an eye on the working of the three tiers of the Panchayati Raj and other local self-government institutions in the district. Elections of all these are held under his supervision. He can get their accounts audited. If he finds that a local self-government in the district is not working satisfactorily, he can recommend to the state government for its suspension and holding of fresh elections within six months of the suspension of a local body. The district collector is the hub around which the wheel of the district administration moves. He is the core of our administrative system. Judicial Administration Each district has a judicial setup for administration of justice. All kinds of disputes occur in a district. It can be a dispute between citizens or a dispute between the government and the citizens. Those persons who indulge in criminal activities also need to be punished. Lawsuits are filed in courts to obtain justice. There are civil courts and criminal courts. Cases concerning property and financial disputes fall under civil courts. Cases of theft, assault, murder and other criminal acts are heard in criminal courts. Officers and their working The district judge and the additional district judge are in charge of highest court for civil cases in the district. The subordinate civil judge first class, sub-judge second class and munsif are subordinate to the court of the district judge. The district judge, additional district judge and the subordinate judge first class have the power to hear suits without any limit relating to their value. In the case of subordinate lower courts, the power is determined in accordance with the provisions of the Suits Valuation Act and its rules. The Court of Sessions Judge is the highest court in the district for criminal cases. Serious criminal cases like murder and decoity are heard by the Court of the Sessions Judge or the additional Sessions Judge. The Sessions Judge can award death sentence. But the death sentence has to be confirmed by the High Court. The Chief Judicial Magistrate can award a sentence up to seven years of imprisonment. A first-class magistrate can award a maximum sentence up to three years of imprisonment or a fine or both. A second-class magistrate can award a maximum sentence up to two years of imprisonment or a fine or both. The amount of fine depends on the crime as well as the powers of a judge. If someone is not satisfied with the judgment of a lower court, he or she can appeal against the decisions to the higher courts. The High Court is the highest judicial authority in a state and district courts function under it. Criminal Courts There are two separate courts to deal with two types of cases, the Civil Court and the Criminal Court. The Court of District Judge is the highest civil court in the district. The District Judge and the additional District Judge are in charge of the court for civil cases in a district. The Court of the Civil Judge and the Court of the Munsif Act under it. Serious criminal cases like murder and robberies are heard by the Sessions Court. The courts of the Chief Metropolitan Magistrate and the First Class Judicial Magistrates work under the Sessions Court. A First Class Magistrate can award a punishment of imprisonment up to two years and fines up to 1,000 rupees. A second class magistrate has the power to award imprisonment for six months and fines up to 
two hundred rupees. A third class magistrate can award imprisonment of up to one month and a fine of up to fifty rupees. However, if the losing side is not satisfied with the judgment of the lower court, it can appeal to the higher court for a review 